Thank you. Welcome back. I gather that you liked the coffee break, which is great. It's not raining any longer, so that's wonderful. Okay. Eminent is not only keynote speeches, it's not only having fun in coffee breaks, but it's also roundtables, as we call them. So we have on stage a few people having maybe different views on topics, and well, the topic of this session is actually quite interesting. Rethinking digital skills for schools. It's going to be moderated by my colleague Tommaso Della Vecchia. So enjoy, we're going to have a, an hour session, and then we break for lunch, an intense hour session. Good luck, see you later. Thank you very much. Thank you, Santi. Thank you, everybody. Um, indeed, it's a great pleasure and honor to be with you today. And we are moving to a session where we try to hear about national experiences and how these build together that consensus, that collaboration that Georgi was mentioning across different member states. We have uh, heard so far visions and approaches and principles which are very inspiring. So we will try to react to those as well. And, but we'll try to deep dive a bit more into different uh, vision and purposes that are pursued by different organizations in different countries, different type of interventions in the countries to bring most more effectively digital competencies and skills to students, teachers, parents, and schools. And also we will see at modalities, challenges, risks, perhaps approaches that could be of practical use, perhaps for some of you, or, or at least interesting and inspiring as well. Uh, hopefully we'll have some time for asking a few questions, so feel free while you hear the conversation to take uh, some notes about what you would like to raise, what you would like to share with the audience. We're here to learn from each other. This is one of the added value of these events and this kind of community, so uh, we would really appreciate that uh, very, very much. I would like to introduce you the speakers that kindly agreed to be on stage with me today. We have Marie Bancal, Director of Partnership Development and Legal Affairs at PIX, which is the national online service uh, open to all for the assessment, development, and certification of digital skills throughout life. We have Noreen Finnegan with us, which is head of unit uh, with the responsibility for the digital strategy for schools and teacher education policy at the Irish Department of Education. And of course, we have Elisabetta Mogini with us, uh, who is director of research uh, at Indira, who, uh, apart from being our uh, kind host for this event, is the National Institute for Documentation, Innovation, and Educational Research. So without further ado, well, first of all, I would like to ask for a, a warming up applause for these uh, kind speakers. <laughs> Thank you very much. They accepted you on the spotlight, and they have many interesting things to share, of course. But of course, we'll try to make the most of the of their knowledge and experience. And I would start to get to get uh, an acquainted a bit, and to uh, start to perhaps also check an assumption we might have, and something that was mentioned even before. Common challenges, common sensitivity when we talk about digital skills and competencies. And most importantly, is there a convergence about the visions and the purposes that are uh, somehow addressed uh, across Europe? And I will start with you, Marie, perhaps. Uh, of course, your body is, uh, is quite, uh, it's a bit particular and different from the national uh, agencies, but what is PIX? visions about the provision of digital skills to, to students and to all, really. Um, yes, maybe to start, uh, you, you forgot to mention uh, I'm from France, <laughs> uh, because it's not in the name. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, that's interesting that you forgot it, because we're not only in France. So that's maybe the reason why <laughs> you forgot that. Um, so as you said, um, PIX is many things, in fact. It's, it's a platform, it's a framework, it's a certificate, and uh, I'll develop that uh, afterwards. But uh, to start on uh, the vision we can have, and we, the vision we share with uh, many ministries in France, because we've been created by the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Higher Education and Research, but also the Ministry of Labor, and I think it's very important uh, to underline that um, those ministries are putting their efforts together on this issue of uh, digital skills. So first, uh, what's very important for us is that if we want to train on digital skills, we have to share a common language. We have to be sure 
we are talking about the same thing. And this common language uh, is very important so that we can bring together all the efforts on digital skills. And I think that the previous intervention uh, showed that uh, the, the, the education system has a crucial role to play in um, uh, teaching digital skills, but also uh, the, the labor markets and people um, from companies, but also uh, vocational training and so on. So uh, we think that having the same language is key uh, to put all the efforts together. And uh, PIX framework is derived from DigComp, and it has been very useful to be able uh, to use DigComp as a common language in France. Uh, second thing, we have to think about it um, in a lifelong perspective. So that's why uh, people can start on PICS from the age of 12 now, uh, but till the end of life. And uh, there's the idea that you can uh, have your own personal accounts and you can go on PICS. It's not just once, it's not just at school, but it's many times during uh, your life. And uh, last thing, um, uh, we think it's very important to have um, transversal digital skills before talking about specific uh, digital skills. We talked about AI this morning. I think and we think you can't go on AI if you don't have basic digital skills. You won't be able to understand all the, um, the issues about AI if you do not have basic digital skills. And maybe as a conclusion <laughs> on this first point, um, at PIX we also think that we can be serious but fun. If you want to engage people in uh, uh, digital skills training, you have to provide them with a tool uh, on which they will want to go. And today people s say, I've played on PIX. And I think it's a great achievement because it means that they will want to come again. And it's very important if you want people to um, spend time on uh, enhancing their digital skills. Thanks a lot, Marie. And indeed, it's, uh, you touched upon some elements that were mentioned already, the transversal, the foundational nature of digital skills, which is something that is more and more recognized, perhaps. So I will try to uh, go around and see if there is a shared vision uh, in, that, in that regard as well, and uh, if we can prove that there's a certain convergence there. Uh, Noreen, is uh, the Irish context and, and government trying to go along those lines as well, or do you have a different vision for what concerns the provision of digital competences to students? Uh, uh, absolutely, and um, I suppose it starts with our national strategy, Harvesting Digital, which sets out our goals for the digital redevelopment, digital developments. Oh. I'll start again, sorry. Um, Absolutely, that we start with our national strategy, Harnessing Digital, which, which sets out our goals for digital development in Ireland. And we understand then that in order to achieve these goals, we will need to focus policies on addressing digital skills at needs at all levels. And um, for those of us in education then, it's imperative that we're proactive in this area and that we do everything to facilitate and support the development of digital skills from an early age for all of our learners. So in response to that national strategy, our own digital strategy for schools to 2027 charts the vision of the Department of Education in this regard. Um, and what we see as you know, the imperative to empower schools to, to harness the opportunities that digital transformation presents them and embed those skills in all aspects of teaching, learning and assessment. Um, and I suppose following on from that, we see it um, in other policies that our understanding of what it now means to be literate in this world includes digital literacy. Um, so to the extent that our follow-on successor to our um, numeracy and literacy strategy will now be a literacy, numeracy and digital literacy strategy. And um, then another um, initiative recently, um, which is more new and seeks to influence online safety for our learners outside of the school space is an initiative to support parents who may wish to enter into voluntary codes with their school communities about access to smart devices. Um, this initiative has garnered a lot of attention in Ireland. It has sparked the imagination of parents who perhaps um, have given their children digital devices 
um, due to peer pressure, and I suppose in terms of smartphones, particularly at, from an earlier age. So we see it as an opportunity to <coughs> publicize the already fabulous online safety resources that we have for parents, um, schools, and learners, and to, um, I suppose, further the debate in that area, um, ensure that parents realize that social networks can be accessed from a variety of means, not just smart devices, to respond to the concerns that we had from teachers and schools about inappropriate social media usage spilling over into schools. While um, obviously smartphone usage in primary schools is very well managed through our schools' acceptable usage policies, we were getting feedback from teachers that cyberbullying and et cetera from outside mm -hmm. was spilling over into the schools. So we see this as a, a really good initiative in terms of the scope it provides us to promote the huge number of resources that we have in terms of online safety to develop further resources and to initiate a digital citizenship champions program. Thank you, thank you, Noreen. And indeed, uh, perhaps there's a component of, of fright, of, of panic, in a way, uh, in uh, and, and the response to that. So it's the opportunity that digital skills provide, but also the need for the school to become a beacon for the responsible use and the protection and the limitation of those risks that were mentioned before as well, uh, especially in regard uh, regard AI. And Elisabetta, you would have then the, the hard task to go after uh, at the end of this first round of questions. Uh, what is the vision of Indira in this domain? Is there something to complement, uh, something that is slightly different, or would you confirm that there's certain convergence? No, actually, I completely agree with my colleagues. Uh, they focus on the main point. Uh, maybe I would add the fact that uh, the scope of education and school is uh, to enable the learners uh, to become citizens of uh, a global world which is very much complex uh, and very fluid. And so, unfortunately, now we have uh, to also um, to enable them with basic competencies, not only the digital competencies. We, we are having problems. I think it's not only an Italian uh, point of view because uh, it seems that students sometimes read and write without thinking about what they produce. And it is because in schools they do not find an environment that helps them in uh, thinking and uh, have uh, a development of the critical thinking and uh, of uh, doubting about what is going on. It seems that uh, there is a division uh, uh, in uh, the world that you live at school and some in another world uh, that is uh, all around them. So we have to make sense, as uh, Georgi said at the beginning, to make sense of the environment where they go to, to learn and uh, to be citizenship uh, of a new world. And uh, that's the reason why we were working as Indira much on the how and why we go to school and how and why you teach and learn to be connected and rethink the model. Of, so to transform the model, as it was said, that is much uh, not updated to the new century uh, skills. So skills uh, is uh, the scope of, of the school. Then you have uh, uh, skills uh, on uh, how you behave, how you uh, um, interpret your, yourself in life. And of course, now you need the digital skills, but they are part of a larger group of competencies that enable you to be uh, a player in, uh, in the world. And maybe also the, the interesting that you have uh, um, an active role in, in this world. So we were working on these uh, since uh, 2012. Uh, with the national digital plan and uh, as an institute we were helping for uh, the space uh, uh, re rethinking of the space of learning inside and outside formally and informally outdoor education seems to be the new frontier mm -hmm. now but it was uh, a long time ago uh, and uh, of course on the methodologies 
the pedagogical, didactical, uh, to think that uh, you have to engage students. Mm. So it's nothing new in the horizon. The new frontier maybe is how we can use more technologies to enable teachers to be much more supporter yeah. of uh, a knowledge and uh, the use of knowledge uh, in life. Uh, that was our main, so rethink the model, I would say. Uh, if we think about digital skills not anymore as a skill set or, or technical component, but foundational, fundamental part of the literacy and digital citizenship of, uh, of the students, then you need to rethink the, yes. the environment and the learning exactly. environment. That's, that's very, very interesting. And, and, and therefore, then I would move back to Ireland to, to look a bit more at what is uh, happening in the country because you're also trying to introduce uh, digital literacy, media literacy, more across the curriculum. Uh, how is that change uh, progressing and what are the implications of this, of this uh, uh, process? It, it, it's some... <laughs> 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 the only the... the last one is always working. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so okay, that's working. Um, it is. I, I suppose coming from, it was the, the learning coming from the previous um, digital strategy as well, and um, understanding that great work was done across the curriculum under the previous strategy, but rem it remains our goal going forward that um, we take the opportunity in terms of curricular reform to embed technology in all aspects of teaching, learning and assessment in every subject, in every classroom. And um, so <coughs> we continue to, to do this. And um, mm -hmm. it, it is just one of the pillars of our technology, um, but it is recognized that it, it is vital. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. And, and just to, uh, before going to Marie for exploring more uh, the, the assessment and accreditation model, uh, I would just ask you, Elisabetta, to specify a bit more about the, the strategies and plans in Italy in place uh, in relation to digital education. As you're one of the countries that has invested greatly, uh, for instance, with the resilience and recovery fund. So there is also a material component to what you mentioned in the model. How do you keep the two, the two strategies together? How do you ma make that, uh, that, that work? And what is the, the plan underlying it, uh, that, that, that process? Uh, of course, uh, you need to have a balance. Uh, and uh, you have uh, to make meet the two strategies. The one that comes bottom up uh, from schools themselves. They have already been uh, involved uh, in uh, transforming education. It was uh, a long time ago, uh, 10, 15 years ago. But now with the Resilience and Recovery National Plan, they have received so much investment, let's say, but it's money, <laughs> our money, uh, to be used uh, to implement either the um, environment uh, seen as uh, a nice well-being place where to stay and learn and teach. And uh, as it was said uh, by our diplomatic advisory at the beginning, also um, to implement more the strategies of laboratories, mm -hmm. innovative laboratories. So to think that the learning happens when you are in group, when uh, you study together. So. Uh, together with your fellows uh, and uh, uh, the, the teachers becomes more a mentor and a facilitator. But the top-down strategy too is, uh, is important and it has to have uh, a name uh, clear that uh, enables the teachers to be part of this mm -hmm. uh, um, policy. And so the investment uh, are now mainly on the teacher training uh, because uh, otherwise uh, they, they won't be able uh, to, uh, mm, they are very much able to understand the needs, uh, but mm -hmm. how you solve the needs uh, of the, the students, uh, it's uh, through uh, a, um, a way of teaching that involves them, and so they, uh, they have been trained not mainly on the use of high techs, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. on how 
technology can enable uh, the, 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 the learners uh, to, to become uh, complete uh, uh, human and uh, <laughs> to, to become um, people that can choose what they want to be in their life. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, we, uh, we project the idea of active learners, uh, but mm -hmm. they have uh, uh, to be responsible uh, and part uh, of the design of uh, the teaching and learning uh, um, happening. So the, the, the Italian strategy, I guess, is um, much on the investment on technology to equip school, mm -hmm. but to think that school are uh, itself <coughs> learning or organization. They can understand uh, more uh, how to use uh, technology in the daily life uh, of, of school mm -hmm. if they are helped uh, by training, training um, both uh, uh, the actors of education, uh, of course principals uh, mm -hmm. as uh, leadership uh, manager of education in the schools and teachers uh, to work together. So mixing up also at the curricula level the STEM education mm -hmm. and so on, ICT, uh, to be put together with other subjects. That's uh, the main uh, <laughs> path of, of investment in Italy. That's very clear. Thank you, Elisabetta. And I think, indeed, I mean, you, you introduced some very important pillars and, and already a bit of methodology and how things are being rolled out at the country level, which is, which is very interesting. Possibly we'll also return back to that concept of a school that uh, is, is somehow self-reflected, a learning organization, and for reflecting on uh, what achieved, they would need to uh, assess themselves, uh, of course, and collect data, which leads me to, uh, to Marie to uh, let you perhaps explore a bit more and explain a bit more what PIX is doing. We have a um, little presentation that if it could be put on screen would be appreciated to uh, uh, describe a bit more what, uh, what PIX does and how you really manage to make of assessment uh, also perhaps a learning opportunity. I can start and the slides will come. Sure. <laughs> um, so uh, a few words on PIX um, and thank you for giving me the, the opportunity of explaining our work. So. Uh, we're a public organization, as I said, um, and our mission is to help everyone become familiar with their digital environment um, and to, to be able um, to, um, like to develop their digital skills throughout their life. So that's the, that's the mission. Um, to do that, uh, we offer uh, three services. Um, so if you, the, the platform is available in English, so for the one not speaking French, you can, uh, you can try it. And uh, it's, it's free, it's open, you can create your own account and you can try the test. Do, don't do that now because I'm speaking, but <laughs> afterwards it's okay. <laughs> um, so three services, uh, assessing, developing and certifying digital skills. Uh, for the moment, we're, we're mostly known for the first and third services, um, the ability to assess and certify, but we're working on the second one right now because it's uh, um, asked by all the, the people using PIX. Um, I wanted to put a, uh, something like serious uh, on how it works. So how can we deal with so different population on the same platform with the same framework? Because there's an adaptive algorithm. So when you start a PIX test, we do not need to know if you're a child or if you're an adult, if you're, uh, you have basic digital skills or not, or if you're an expert or not. Uh, because you, you will always start with a question uh, level two. Uh, in a framework that has uh, eight level. And then, depending on your answers, um, we will calculate your, re-evaluate your level after each answer you give. And the idea is, is that uh, you have questions that uh, bring you to your best level. So it's, uh, it must be uh, hard enough to know what your level is, but not too hard or you will stop the tests. So for those of you who have tested it and find it very hard, good news, you're good in digital <coughs> skills. If it's hard, it's good news. Um, so 
how does it work uh, in the education system? Teachers have a specific platform called PixOrga, which allows them to create personalized test campaigns to invite pupils to go through the test and to manage the day-to-day -day running of campaigns. So it's the way they can access data uh, regarding the level of the pupils. They can also know where they are in their uh, tests. So, and they can analyze results because the idea is that based on the results, they can adapt the learning uh, to be um, uh, relevant with the level of the pupils. Um, here, are, here is a screenshot of uh, PixOrga just to show you the kind of information teachers can find on PixOrga and how uh, it's a tool uh, to adapt their learning. Um, the way we are deployed in France, but also in Belgium, and they don't want me to talk about them, but they are here, um, is, so in France, uh, we are in secondary and higher education, and there is a huge public policy on that, because uh, PICS is mandatory, uh, uh, having the PICS certificate is mandatory um, uh, in, in uh, secondary education. Uh, at the age of 14 and 17, so you have to pass the exam. You don't have the choice, and teachers do not have the, to the choice. Um, the, the important thing is not the, the certificate, but it's if you have to pass the certificate, you have to train. So that's why the certificate is mandatory. Um, but we are also used in other national public policies, like um, by the Public Employment Service, uh, on the digital inclusion policy. So that's the way we use in public policy. Just to mention it, we're also used by uh, HR and trainers in organization. So companies, ministries uh, that want to uh, train uh, people on, on digital skills also use PIX and PIXORGA platform. Um, I think I've told you like the, the most important thing on the PIX in the French education system, it's clearly an ambitious goal. Um, all, um, um, all pupils will have to pass uh, the certificate, and uh, teachers have a set of tests depending on uh, uh, their discipline so that they can um, offer a, a new test uh, at school. And the deployment is supported by regional education authority and a network of ambassadors. So we're relying on uh, the whole structure uh, of the, the education system to deploy PICS. Um, you asked me also to tell what's the next step what's about PICS. So uh, just to give you an overview, we're working on PICS for primary school pupils. I think we've talked about the use of smartphone and it's not starting at 12. So there's a, a huge demand uh, to have a platform that could be used uh, for, um, like by prim par primary school teachers. It will be a new platform because we want, it's a specific approach. Uh, you, we think it's, it's very important uh, to have uh, something that is really relevant for uh, this uh, group of pupils. Um, we are also working, as I said, on the second service of PICS, which is uh, to help develop digital skills. Um, so we're working on new training modules. Um, six years ago on PIX, you could evaluate yourself and also learning by evaluating yourself. Now we really want to have specific modules to train people because it has been asked, as I said. And uh, also, um, like on the evolution, I think it's important to say that um, we're working with Belgium, as I said, but we're also talking with many countries. They have the same issues. I think uh, it's uh, something that has been said before. Uh, we all have issues on digital skills. And um, m many uh, countries, we, we had the opportunity to talk with, with uh, in the process of working on EDSC, the European Digital Skills Certificate. Um, we're interested in what has been done in France, and I think that uh, it's not French, in fact. It's, uh, it's in French, <laughs> the, the, it started in French, uh, but the framework, uh, the way uh, we adapted the platform and so on, is not French. It can be used by any countries. Uh, so the way we want to work on that is uh, by sharing a common good. So it's the way we, 
we have the conversation with other countries uh, because we have, it's so important, it's such an important issue that uh, we have to put our resources together and we can do it on a common good, so that's the way we're working on it. Thank you very much, Marie. That's that's impressive uh, service and, and activity that you provide. And of course, it leads us, uh, it's also quite interesting to see as any of these initiatives now have to rely on different organization, a uh, network of uh, supportive and enthusiastic teachers or trainers or ambassadors. That's, that's really uh, the only way possibly to make this initiative scale. In the school sector, it means that, of course, teachers would, would need to, of course, they are burdened and, uh, and, response and um, empowered with this, with this topic. I would like to go back to, uh, to you, Elisabetta, with this concept of the assessment process as something intrinsically valuable from a learning perspective for students and teachers. Uh, because we discussed previously about a bit this uh, new modality of training teachers and engaging and making them part of the change process. Could you tell us more about uh, this, uh, this approach and how you think it, it could lead to, to real sustainable change in schools? Mm. Let me go to the title of, uh, of the conference. Uh, is uh, empowering school with digital skills. So digital skills have been uh, a scope also to be taught to, uh, to schools. Schools have to think themselves as part of a digital world. So they are an organization. They, they are involved in transforming the, uh, the teaching and learning um, uh, practices. And uh, if uh, uh, they only uh, think that they are part of, uh, let's say, a bureaucratic process, uh, something that comes from top to down, and they I have only the duty to enable uh, students with knowledge, uh, that's uh, a big part, but it's not anymore updated to what uh, they have to do. They, they, they have to uh, to have an idea of uh, of a new school, and so working in the DigiComp uh, framework, uh, as uh, all our member states refer to, uh, we have uh, um, helped and supported uh, since uh, 2014 schools to think that they have to. To rethink uh, in many different dimensions what they were doing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, of course, the infrastructure, but also the methodologies, uh, um, the the way they they work uh, as a team inside uh, uh, the school uh, with uh, different subjects uh, being integrated uh, to one another, and also in uh, um, improving the performances of the students because they were improving mm -hmm. the performances <laughs> of the teacher and uh, the, the principal uh, at the same time. So um, it's, a, it's a continuous process. They have to be helped by some instruments. Uh, the first of all was uh, delivered by the European Commission was the selfie mm -hmm. that was uh, mainly based uh, on digital uh, uh, activities uh, and uh, we have introduced uh, something more to think that innovation is uh, a process uh, that works uh, at different levels and includes different dimensions also the well-being but uh, um, many others and so now we are um, developing uh, a selfie uh, for those schools to help them through uh, questionnaires that are delivered uh, to uh, principals, uh, teachers, and students uh, to see if uh, they notice that mm -hmm. the school uh, is evolving, uh, is uh, transforming. Because most of the time we rely on what people uh, say 
and think they are changing, but nothing is happening. Mm. So mm. the self-reflection uh, uh, process of a teacher and of uh, a principal and of a school as a unit helps uh, to implement the new world and the new uh, way of, um, of thinking, the model of schooling. Uh, so I know this is not assessment as it was presented before, but it's a part of the assessment because uh, if the teacher is uh, more engaged in the transformation process and uh, all the community um, is inspired by the culture of innovating the school, then these tools together with investment can really change and be synergetically mm -hmm. uh, something that evolve the system. Otherwise, maybe the, mm, let me say, the recovery and resilience plans will end and we will go back in transforming education because there are no more investment. So investment is a part of the change but it has to work together with other tools mm -hmm. and self-reflection mm -hmm. tools for schools in uh, innovation, it could be helpful as uh, the assessment of the, the students, not on any mm -hmm. longer on knowledge, but on how you can implement a new way of schooling. Absolutely. That was the idea. <laughs> I hope it was clear. <laughs> Thank you, Elisabetta. Yes, definitely. And, and also, in, I would like to perhaps uh, uh, decline the same, the, the, uh, make a declination of the same question to you, Noreen, uh, about the engagement, retention, and training of teachers. Of course, if you have uh, something to add uh, in the Irish perspective, but also uh, about the other bodies and people and actors that uh, in a previous discussion together you, you raised, it was important to uh, engage and, and leverage for sustainable change. Absolutely. Um, we would see building key skills in our teacher workforce is critical to the success. And from that regard, I suppose it begins with initial teacher education, um, where now digital skills, incorporating digital liter literacy and using technologies in all aspects of teaching now form a core part of all initial teacher education programs in Ireland as well as opportunities for student teachers to experiment with new and emerging technologies. Mm. Um, but of course it doesn't stop there. And then, so in terms of the continuing continuum for um, teacher professional development, we have um, extensive resources available under EJA, um, the department's integrated teacher education support <coughs> system. So they provide supports across a range of leadership, pedagogical, curricular, and education areas in general, and then specifically have a technology and education team and a team of ICT advisors who then support and advise teachers and schools in terms of the digital side of things. Thanks a lot. And I think uh, perhaps it goes also towards that direction of involving the kind of a middle management level of, of decision and policy makers that, that Divina was mentioning, this new new networks, new, new figures, new uh, roles within, within the educational context when it comes to educational uh, technology and digital skills for schools. That, that's definitely an interesting part uh, of the work that we also carry out. Before continuing with the question, I would like to uh, open also to the, to the audience. If there are any questions or contribution or comments, we would be happy, of course, to hear your point of view as well, or our guests would be pleased to, to answer any questions. Is there any immediate question? Yes? Ah, this. Um, yes, one question for, for kids. I was wondering whether the platform um, is also mandatory for teachers or, or not. Because I remember you were mentioned that this, sorry. <laughs> I was wondering, is open also for teacher, and if so, is it mandatory for them as well? Uh, good question. <laughs> the use of the platform is not mandatory. We are not forcing teachers to use Pixorga, but uh, if they want to prepare their pupils to pass the certificates, it's better to use uh, specific tests that are accessible through Pixorga. But in some cases, it's not the teachers themselves that use the platform. It can be done like at a higher level, and there's, there's a code that allows pupils to enter in a test. And uh, teachers are not always using the platform for sure. But it's available. 
Thank you. I, I have uh, questions for you, Marie, and also for you, Elizabeth, if you allow me. So my question to you, uh, Marie, is uh, when I imagine peaks, um, I ask myself um, the question, how monolithic is it as a system that might be implemented in another country? You said it's not French, but it is in French. Um, or with other words, is it something you need to take as it is, or is there some modularity around it? That's the first question. And the other question is, because you've mentioned the testing, and this is fundamental for certification and assessment, but the testing has this nice side, side effect that you start to teach for the test. How much of the teaching to the test do you, do you already observe? Because uh, with other words, can you start from scratch and just, you know, uh, like clean slate, have somebody go through the certification without teaching them to the test? Sorry for two questions, and my question to you would be, Elisabetta, you mentioned the very unprecedented also RRF experience of, of Italy, and I can just confirm it because we have also seen what, what is happening. What is for you the main, the main lesson from, from this very, very big investment uh, in, the, in the, let's say, transformation of education and training? Something that you mentioned a little bit, you alluded, but uh, something that you definitely would like to see continuing, uh, also if there would be no RRF. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I have you can, you can process. <laughs> so on the modularity, there are two types of modularity. The first one is that the framework has, I think, 700 learning outcomes, but maybe more because it's <laughs> evolving nearly every day. Um, so depending on the context, uh, you can choose, you can pick learning outcomes to create a specific test. So, uh, like in the French education system, maybe they don't want to pick the same learning outcomes as in the Belgium uh, education system. So, you can really choose what's relevant for uh, uh, your context. And then um, you have uh, like the core framework based on DigiComp, but we also have the ability to create a specific framework that we call PIX Plus. And uh, that's the way like, we can create specific items and specific questions that are adapted to uh, a country or to a specific uh, theme. So that's the way we work with different uh, countries um, and different sectors also, because uh, you, you, you might want to adapt the items. And I already forgot this. Ah, yes. Uh, so. Uh, for the moment, the model of certification is that it's based on your profile. So you have to pass many tests on PICS to create your digital profile, and then the certificate will test in an examination context if you are able to reach the same level based on the level you have obtained. Um, but there are many bias uh, with this model. Uh, the, the main one is that uh, teachers tend to say, okay, just do five competencies and you will be sure to have the certificates. So the result of the certificate is not the, the real level of pupils, but the level of engagement and the time they could spend on the platform. So we are changing the model this year with a new certificate that will not be based on your digital profile. We will start from scratch. And we were able to move from the first model to the second one because we have lots of data. So we are able to, to find your real level with, with very few questions, in fact, um, because there are links between competence. So it's having this, uh, all this data that we can uh, uh, use I IRT, in fact, and uh, uh, the certification test will not be based on your profile, but only on what you will prove during the examination. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Elisabetta, what would you keep? <laughs> I would answer in two different ways. One is on the content and one is on the method. Uh, as far as the content, I, I, I think that we should insist in helping the school as an organization and teachers uh, to 
to think that they are part of the changement. And so it's, uh, it's a question of supporting culturally, technically, and uh, keep on uh, uh, making them face to face uh, with the, the big topics of the future of education and uh, to make them play a role. That, that's the, the, the content. Through the methods, what we have taught through this movement of innovation that we have supported as Indire, but they were also part of the national plan at the Italian level, Avanguardia, Piccole Scuole, and the Fab Learn Makers uh, movement, uh, is that networking is the key driver to support uh, any kind of policies. So, but really networking, not that one that is uh, part of a bureaucratic process. You have asked schools uh, to, uh, to be um, together to gain and to, to answer a national call and to have the investment and, uh, and then use the funds because they are in a network and then after the project is over, the network is, uh, uh, is dead. Networking, it's uh, again a question of uh, a, a mindset that you work together with the others, uh, they could be inside and outside your schools, in your territory, and uh, in Italy, all over Italy, from uh, different regions, and even like it winning mm, from different countries. Networking means that uh, you share and you peer learn together. So uh, the sharing is not enough, but you have uh, to construct things and project together, and mainly the practices. So networking and uh, uh, keep on um, um, helping the teacher by delivering the, the best practices, and that's, uh, that's uh, the problem, the point, of which is the best practice, because it's the best in a certain context, it might not be transferable and sustainable in another context. So to identify best practices means that you have a clear idea of what are the pillars of innovating the, the school. So it's not only the subject, the technologies, but if it, they have effect and an impact on students, so it comes again, the assessment. But if we keep on assessing the students in the traditional way, how much knowledge they have, and not certifying the competencies they have learned through these practices, so that's a point that has to be developed more, because assessing, uh, it's uh, a tool, it's uh, a potential, crucial tool for both uh, the learners, the teachers and the students. And it makes uh, the difference if they reflect on uh, what they have done and why they are doing that kind of process, both. So we have uh, making and learning, uh, learning and thinking visible. It's not visible why they are learning and what they are learning to, to be part of their future skills. So I hope this was <laughs> the part of the answer you were expecting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elisabetta. Yes, those other questions? Hi, uh, my name is Juhu. Uh, so I actually, uh, <laughs> so I see you searching. Uh, so I actually have uh, uh, quite, uh, Happy that you mentioned about uh, leadership organization, because obviously we're talking about digital skills, uh, but when we're talking about schools, I believe we are quite aware of what digital skills we need already, and it's already the topic for the past 20 years, I believe. But what we're truly missing right now is somehow related to the organizational management and leadership skills. And I see a lot of ideas from your uh, talks, for example, working as a team together, and Noreen, you especially mentioned about the leadership trainings and uh, supporting teams. Um, I, I also have two questions, but they're related. The first one is that what are the leadership skills that you're actually looking for in terms of managing schools facing these challenges in terms of digital age? And the second one is that what are the biggest challenges at this moment when you're trying to implement such structure in the schools 
by introducing management or raising some um, advanced teachers within school uh, to lead the transformation or having your uh, technical supporting team. Uh, what are the biggest challenges right now to put such a structure uh, so different from the traditional school management uh, perspective? You would like to take it that upstairs? Um, and if you can speak up, because here in the back they cannot hear you okay, very well. Okay. Um, I, told, I suppose in terms of leadership skills, it is that, that vision piece. Um, understanding that schools in Ireland are independent entities, so um, while we can provide all the supports in the world, we cannot direct um, totally what, what happens in schools. So we do very much rely on school leaders to take our visions and our strategies, the trainings available, to ensure that their teachers avail of continuous professional development, that um, in terms of the ICT grant funding that's provided to the schools, that it's used appropriately, that public procurement rules are followed. Um, and sorry, the second, it was the second question, part of the question for me as what well. Are the biggest the, our biggest challenge. Yeah. It, it, it is, I suppose, to an extent, that, that independence of the schools and um, and and our approach in Ireland, to, you know, it apart from the um, the independence of the schools. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry, uh, sorry. Maybe you could elaborate just a little bit. So the uh, as challenges is because you're trying to make a change in organization, right? So you're trying to bring. Uh, leaderships and maybe new managers or supporting teams, uh, uh, what are the challenges when you're trying to introduce a new structure? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I suppose um, our challenges are that we want to embed this right across the continuum, um, right across all aspects of our curriculum. And it is, as an organization, the more than I'm sure all of yourselves, um, very busy. And so what we're doing is we're digital, we're the digital side of the house, but we're trying to interact with all other areas of the department to ensure that they embed digital as they're considering any redevelopments in their areas. Elisabetta, would you like to, to comment? Because you, you had also this activity with digital animators, so it's a bit of a similar approach to have that mm. technical, pedagogical type of stuff and leadership in the school. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking that, uh, mm, first of all, uh, which are the skills of uh, a leader in the schools? Mm? And uh, we have to go back uh, uh, in helping them to be more passionate, to be more, um, mm, let's say, creative, and uh, to imagine themselves as a pedagogical leader more than manager of an organization. At least to mix these two attitudes together. And uh, in Italy, we have a context uh, which will help them a lot. Uh, this, at the beginning of this conference, uh, we were uh, remembering Luigi Berlinguer. He's also the ministry who signed one of the most famous law in Italy, that schools are autonomous. And they are considered as a center of research before uh, being schools uh, to deliver teaching and uh, to prepare the space for learning. And if you think that as a school uh, you are a researcher institute in practice, uh, doing research in action, and that uh, teachers are not only practitioners but are also researchers, at the, the leadership of those, you have to have uh, uh, someone who has got a vision about uh, the education uh, in the future. So that's the reason why I think they have to be passionate, but at the same time, they have to have a vision about uh, what uh, the future of education uh, is, um, is going to be and how you want to uh, to be a, a change maker inside. And of course, then you have to keep them uh, with uh, very uh, technical tools, uh, exchanging practices with the other one, and thinking that uh, they are part uh, of uh, a community and they have to work uh, with 
their staff. So it's not a hierarchical organization, it's a shared organization, but uh, there is uh, um, a period in which you expect from the leader to be a leader and to, uh, to have uh, more responsibility than the others, otherwise he is not the principal of the school. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Elisabetta. Thank you, Noreen. And uh, we are uh, we have reached actually the end of the uh, roundtable discussion, unfortunately. But it was good to close in a ring uh, composition, starting from the purpose and the vision at organizational or even national level. How that was represented at convergence, even at European level, and now getting to the leadership at school level or department level, which which needs to be one of the key elements for making the rethinking of digital skills in schools a reality and producing the effects it's supposed to. So uh, thank you very much for your uh, kind contribution. We'll continue the conversation during the lunch break, but for now, uh, thank you once again for being with us. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. That was great. Thank you. And, um, before we yeah, yeah, stay just a second uh, and, uh, excuse my back I just stay here so no back so before we break for lunch uh, you've been taking pictures of the presentation we are going to share the presentations anyway so when we receive uh, when we send you the email with the link to make the evaluation form so in change of the evaluation form we will send you no I'm, I'm kidding uh, <laughs> We will share with you the links so that you can download the presentations. And if you want, you can make an evaluation also of the conference. So we break for lunch, networking lunch. So we get back in an hour in this room. Thank you again. Thank you.